Guess what's trending in the news? El Nino. El Nino's back. Back like a heart attack. Forecasters say the natural. Natural like spring water. Notice how they threw natural in there? This is trending, guys. Ladies and gentlemen. Kids, people of the earth are inheriting it in the future. They're calling this weather occurrence natural. And it's going to be strong this year. Now I have a theory that they've been trying to hold back the rain on California. Now, they did that for like three, four years straight. And now they're going to say it's going to be a lot of rain going into California now. Texas and the southern states. So, they say they're not going to be totally out of the drop, but the rain is coming. And there was a storm today. If you look at the video I did today, there was a storm. It almost had like a cyclone moving activity on it. And there was some rain. that A lot of rain actually looked like it was falling in Nevada and California. And there was some rising stations over there. So I, I was just thinking about that. That it's possible that eventually one day there could be a, a typhoon that goes up to California. And... It's anything could happen with this El Nino here. So I just want to jump into Noah because I use Noah a lot lately with the videos. They put some truth out there. They're also going to tell you some bullshit as well. And just to see that this is trending right now in the news, that this is what we have to see, that they have to go out of the way to say it's natural. You know, <laughs> which is totally unnatural of anybody to say something like that. Basically, they're saying we have hit a point. El Nino plus climate extremes where forecasting has no past equivalent for comparison. Add geoengineering effects and it's all set on steroids. Prepare for anything at this point. And if you look at the thermal stressing of the blob over here on California. And then you got part of that blob moving up into Alaska and to the strait. And then you look all the way right on the equator. Straight to Ecuador. It's happening there as well, so. Virtually all of California is now forecast to have a wet winter. It's going to be lots of snow, lots of rain on that ground. And I just found out the other day that the rain is a lot worse. It's a lot more dangerous than we ever thought. It's just the way it hits the ground and what happens with water, with air when it hits the ground. So I'm going to go into that a little bit as well. But this rain... It's coming. It's going to be hot rain off the Pacific. So it's going to be interesting what people are picking up with their guard counters uh, in the future. Here's Noah. The strong El Nino sets the stage for 2015-2016 winter weather. Forecasters at NOAA's Climate Predicting Center issued the U.S. winter outlook today, favoring cooler and wetter weather in the southern tier states with above average temperatures most likely in the west. Across the northern tier, 
This year's El Nino, among the strongest on record, is expected to influence weather and climate patterns this winter by impacting the position of the Pacific jet stream. So, this jet stream has been moved. A strong El Nino is in place and should exert a strong influence over our weather this winter, said Mike Halpert, Deputy Director at NOAA's Climate Prediction Center. While temperature and precipitation impacts associated with El Nino are favored, El Nino is not the only player. Cold air outbreaks and snowstorms will likely occur at times this winter. However, the frequency, number, and intensity of these events cannot be predicted on a seasonal timescale. Other factors that play a role in the winter weather include the Arctic Oscillation, which influences the number of Arctic air masses that penetrate into the south and nor'easter areas on the east coast, and the Madden-Julian Oscillation, which can impact the number of heavy rainstorms in the Pacific Northwest. The 2015 U.S. Winter Outlook of December Precipitation Outlook what are then average conditions most likely in the southern tier in the United States from central and southern California, across Texas to Florida, and up the east coast to southern New England? Above average precipitation is also favored in southeastern Alaska. So Alaska is going to be red hot. So you're going to have a warmer temperatures in Seattle, Washington area. So that place is still going to be under drought. And it's going to be getting that hot air off the blob, but it's better that than rain for them, I guess. Remember, this area was the rainiest, one of the most rainiest places in the world was Washington State. So what's happening is totally out of the norm. So it looks like Billings and Idaho, those places were, were rainy as well at one point. Those places are going to be drier. We had some high readings there. It's going to be drier around the Great Lakes. And it's going to be wetter in the southern states because I, yeah, I feel like we're going to get a lot of storms now coming off that Pacific now. And they're just going to be heading towards California, Texas, Arizona, southern part of New Mexico and California. Precipitation outlook. Where are the average conditions most likely in the southern tier of the United States, from central and southern California across the Texas to Florida and up to the east coast to southern New England? Above average precipitation is also favored in southeastern Alaska. It's going to be hot in Alaska. Drier than average conditions most likely for Hawaii. Yeah, they want to keep that area dry. It makes sense. You don't want a bunch of that Fukushima rain in Hawaii. Central and western Alaska parts of the Pacific Northwest and Northern Rockies and for areas north the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley will be drier than average. Temperature outlook above average temperatures are favored across much of the west and the northern half of the United States. Temperatures are also favored to be above average in Alaska and much of Hawaii. Below average temperatures are most likely in the southern plains and southeast. So you see that? That's just totally flipped out. You're having colder temperatures in the south, warmer temperatures in the north. What the fuck is going on? The drought outlook. The U.S. drought outlook shows some improvement is likely in central and southern California by the end of January, but not drought removal. Additional statewide relief is possible during February and March. Drought removal is likely across large parts of the southwest, while improvement of removal is also likely in the southern plains. However, drought is likely to persist in the Pacific Northwest and Northern Rockies, with drought development likely in Hawaii and parts of the Northern Plains and the Northern Great Lakes region. While it's good news that drought improvement is predicted for California, is that so sure? I think I'd rather have a drought than radioactive rain. But then, what does the sheeps, sheeples know? What do the sheep know? One season of above average rain and snow is unlikely to remove four years of drought. Said Halpert, California would need close to twice as normal rainfall to get out of the drought, and that's unlikely. This seasonal outlook does not project where and when snowstorms may hit or provide total seasonal snowfall accumulations 
snow forecasts are dependent upon the strength and track of winter storms, which are generally not predictable more than a week in advance. NOAA produces seasonal outlooks to help communities prepare for what's likely to come in the next few months and minimize weather impacts on lives and livelihoods, empowering people with actionable forecasts and winter weather tips. It's key to NOAA's effort to build a weather-ready nation. Will the strongest El Nino in almost 20 years mean relief for drought-stricken California? Should New England brace for another snowy winter? NOAA's winter outlook issued on October 15th offers a look at what's most likely to occur. After flirting with El Nino last winter, the atmosphere finally began responding to the warming ocean last spring. Since then, sea surface temperature departures have steadily increased. And heading into winter, we are seeing values not seen since the big 1997-98 episode. Strong El Ninos are known to exert a significant influence on our weather and climate, particularly during winter. So not surprisingly, the outlooks this year reflect El Nino impacts. Above average temperatures are favored across much of the west and the northern half of the contiguous United States. Temperatures are also favored to be above average in Alaska and much of Hawaii. Below average temperatures are most likely in the southern plains and in the southeast. Remember, these maps show only the most likely outcome. There is always some chance that seasonal temperature will be below, near, or above average. Both temperature and precipitation predictions have parts of the country labeled EC for equal chances, which means there is no tilt in the odds towards either above, near, or below average temperature or precipitation. An enhanced storm track favors above average precipitation along the southern tier of the nation from California through Texas to Florida and along the east coast to New England with wetter than average conditions also favored in southern Alaska. The low average precipitation is most likely in Hawaii, central and western Alaska, in parts of the Pacific Northwest and Northern Rockies, and around the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley. While the precipitation outlook suggests good news for California, one season of above average rain and snow is unlikely to erase four years of drought. The drought outlook shows some improvement is likely in central and southern California by the end of January, but not drought removal. Additional statewide relief is possible during February and March. Drought removal is likely across large parts of the southwest, while improvement or removal is also likely in the southern plains. However, drought is likely to persist in the Pacific Northwest and northern Rockies, with drought development likely in Hawaii, parts of the northern plains and in the northern Great Lakes region. So what about snow? Remember, the winter outlook focuses on climate conditions. It doesn't address typical winter hazards, such as extreme cold or snowstorms, which result from rapidly evolving atmospheric conditions and which can happen even during a mild winter. Stay tuned to NOAA to be weather ready and climate smart. From NOAA's Climate Prediction Center, I'm Mike Halpert.